I think I may have found my new favorite VS Code extension. It was released just yesterday and it has almost 20,000 installs already. Hey, what's up? My name is Chris and welcome to Coding in Public. This new extension, Console Ninja, is released by the people over at Wallaby JS. Now, I've mentioned one of their tools over on my channel before, Quoka. That gives you a really great readout as a dev. Uh, Wallaby works with testing. Console Ninja is just basically bringing the console inside of VS Code. Now, you might say, well, I, I've kind of already got some stuff like that. Not like this. All right, this is really cool. Let me show you quickly what it does, and then we'll talk to what we're going to cover in this video. They're getting all these readouts here and they can open it up in a sidebar. You also get just access to everything over here in the actual VS Code, right where you're writing. In this video, I wanna show you a bunch of different use cases, and if you stick around to the very end, I've actually got an announcement I'd like to make. But first, we're gonna look at two very simple vanilla JS apps, and I'll show you how to get it up and running with Live Server. Secondly, I wanna show you how it works in React. And then finally, I wanna show you how it works on the server side with Next.js. So let's kinda of do those one at a time. So let me shut this down up here. And I've got a button in here. You'll see I've got a span with little ninja in here. When I hover over this, I got this little, nice little animation. But what I'm trying to capture is a click event. And sometimes when you have spans or SVGs or things like that inside of buttons, you don't realize that you're actually capturing a click on the span, not on the button. So I just want to see, hey, is the thing I'm clicking on the same as the thing I've set the event listener against? In this case, that would be the button. So I'm going to console log that. Now, like I said, this does work with the extension live server, and I've actually got it up and running over here. That's what you see over this way. However, when I go to click this, nothing is going to happen. Now, if I come in here and I look at this, you get this nice little readout that tells me it has been paused. This is the only real setting you need to enable when it comes to Console Ninja. If you want to use it with live server, you've got to enable it in the settings. So I'm going to go ahead and open up my settings here and just search for Ninja, because it's the only thing I think I have with Ninja in it. There we go. And you can see you've got some defaults here as far as how you want, like, hours, minutes, seconds displayed for each log, how many you want displayed. You can set a couple of other settings. Probably the most important one is the output mode. So you can either do it beside the file, in view, opens the console ninja output in a separate view, and I'll show you that uh, later on. So you can decide which you want to be the default, beside files the default for now. Now here it works with Vite, with Jest, Webpack, Next.js, Cypress, HTTP server, uh, serve with the node modules. It even works with Shopify's new hydrogen framework. But in order to get it to work with live server and live preview, you have to actually enable those here. So I'm going to do that. And then you'll notice you've got to restart your editor. So let me restart my editor and get this back up and running. And I'll be right back with you. All right. So I've gone ahead and restarted VS Code. I've started up the live server extension again. And now you'll notice that I'm getting this little eye, which shows me that Console Ninja is watching the file. Now, they do give you nice little readouts down here. And I'll keep showing you that as we keep going. Now, all I would do is click here, and normally I'd expect to see this over on the client side. However, I can just click here and see false. So it's not the same thing, which means I must be clicking the actual span. If I move over here away from the span, I get true. And you'll notice it just stacks them up right there. So for something simple like this, that's super nice not to have to open up the console over in the browser. Now, let's look at another example. I'm going to come over here to a Ninja HTML page. And basically, I've just got Ninjas stacked all up. If they're seen, then they will hide their shadow. Let me actually move to that page. All right, so here's a ninja all the way down there at the very bottom. All right, so what we're going to do is use another thing I use in VanillaJS a lot, which would be an intersection observer. So when that thing gets on the page, I want to basically see if it is intersecting or not. So you can see when I refresh and then I come back over to VS Code, I'm being told, no, it is not intersecting. So let's say as I scroll, I'm getting a little bit closer and I'm expecting it to intersect. There we go. Now it is intersecting. And you can see I get two readouts, one false and one true. If I come back up, I should have three. Now it's false again. Now it's come back down and now we're true again. Now it's pretty obvious when this is intersecting, but let's say I want to do something special here. So let's write a little ternary. We'll say ninja dot is intersecting. If that is true, I want to say ninja dot target dot class list dot add. And I want to add scene. All right, which means if they're seen, then they'll disappear. Their shadow will, will disappear. On the other hand, I can remove it if they're not intersecting. So that's easy enough. But now let's say I come down to the options object and I pass in a root margin. And I can't remember, like, does negative 200 pixels, does that mean like 200 pixels off the screen or after they're already on the screen? And sometimes I struggle with this, trying to remember exactly when it's going to add or remove classes or things like that. So now we've got that set up. I'm going to go ahead and click down here and you can just clear the output altogether. So that way we kind of get a fresh start. So if I come up here, we start with false. As I move down, I'm just wondering exactly when is it going to be marked as seen. I get closer to it and I can already see it. 
and nothing has changed in my console log. Now in this case, this is pretty obvious too because nothing has changed visually. Where's 200 pixels? Negative 200 pixels must be like that. And you see now the shadow kind of disappears. So you can see how helpful it is just to have a little console log, especially in this case where as I come up here, let's actually clear this again. I start to scroll and I'm like, okay, when is it going to be applied? When is that gonna be applied? When is it gonna be applied? True, okay, so right here is when it's being marked as true because of this root margin. So I know now precisely when this is happening as somebody scrolls through my page so that by the time they get there, now I know that the class has already been removed. Now in this case, I don't want it like this because I want them to actually see that being removed. So just little things like this are helpful to get it right here rather than having to open it up in the browser. All right, so those are the two very simple vanilla JS examples. Let me show you in React. This is a stock Vite React app. And as I look down here, you can see that Ninja is giving me this readout down here that its current status is waiting for Vite to start. Now, it's smart enough to know that I'm using Vite already, but let me go ahead and open this up and say pmpm run dev. And now notice that the Ninja turns to a little clock watch. And now at this point, it's just waiting for me to do runtime events. So let's give it something to run. So let's console log the count. So if I save it here, you're going to see automatically I already get that it's saying zero. Now you may notice that it's already giving me the count twice. And the reason it's doing that is because in React 18 in dev mode, it actually mounts this component, then it unmounts it and then it remounts it. So I actually get it twice, which is exactly what's happening. That means if I come over here and I start to click, you see I get one, I get two, I get three. Now in this case, I'm obviously seeing it in the UI as well, but that's not always the case. And so to be able to very quickly see what you have going on is super helpful. So let's say I came in here and I said something like name and set name. And this really is the killer feature of Console Ninja is the error handling you get. So let's say I set this to something like an empty string for some reason, and then I came back down this way and I changed this out to name dot to uh, lowercase. Now notice I'm actually getting an error message directly in here. Now it's a little hard to read, so I can come in here and I can open up the whole output. Now over here, I'm getting all this listed out along with a full call stack. I can even click inside here and it directs me to the section of my code. So the error handling is really cool and it works great in Console Ninja. Finally, let's look at that Next.js app to see how it works on the back end. So here I've got a stock Next app exactly as they tell you to do it in the documentation. And what I want to do is look at the back end. So I've got this hello route in my API folder. Let's go ahead and just console log something like console log uh, like in hello, just so I know that it's actually working. Now, in order for this to fire as a, a console log down here, I need to actually go to the route. And you'll notice as soon as I hit the route, now I'm getting this console log. Now, in this case, I'm just console logging a string, so not super helpful, but you could console log like the request that comes in or something like that. So you're seeing exactly what's hitting your back route. Lastly, let's just see how it handles pages. So if I come over here, like when it's rendering a page, and I'll come up here and let's just export an async function with get server side props. And in this case, I want to actually hit that endpoint. So we'll say const res await equals await fetch HTTP local host 3000. And I know it needs to be API and hello. Then let's grab the data from that await res.json, and we need to return our props. So we'll say props, name. And what we want is, let's look back at the route. Yeah, so just data.name, right? Data.name. And then maybe let's go ahead and import this somewhere. Um, let's see, why don't we do it right? Let's just do welcome right here. Okay, so here I just want the name. And in order to get that, I've got to pass it in as a prop right here. So I should be getting this already in the UI, but just so you can see that it's happening in the UI and then we'll also console log it. So let's grab this and we'll console.log the data. And I'll save it there. We're not going to get it yet until I actually go to the main route. So let me come back home and refresh the page. And you see that I'm actually getting a console log from this get server size props that's hitting my API endpoint, returning back to me the name. And then of course I already see it here. Welcome John Doe. And let's just be grammatically correct while we're at it. So this should be welcome comma John Doe. All right, perfect. Now, one thing to note, Console Ninja is very new, so you're gonna run into bugs, but the folks over at WallabyJS are quick at development, and I have every confidence that they'll get all the bugs ironed out very quickly. All right, I mentioned at the very beginning that I've got an announcement, and that is that my Astro course is basically ready. All right, it drops on Tuesday of this next week. If you'd like an early preview, I would love for you to look at the first couple of lessons early. Just send me an email at chris at codingandpublic.dev, 
The only thing I ask is that if you really love the first couple of lessons, that when it launches on Tuesday, you tell everyone you know about it. That will be a huge help to me. I put a ton of work into this, and I think it's a lot of fun. And you can see here, this is what we're going to be building out. We've got these generated automatically. We've got all these dynamic routes being generated. And in fact, if I come over to the blog page, we're even going to have pagination. If I come back, now I've got a previous page. I'm going to show you how to do all of this. We're even going to set up an RSS feed. We're even going to handle images and actually convert them on the fly to like WebP or AVIF formats. We're going to do all kinds of fun stuff. If I jump in here, you're going to notice that not only do I have the code itself or the text itself, but I've also got different blog categories, related posts that share the same category. All of this we're going to set up from scratch using Astro. Again, that drops Tuesday. If you're interested, email me, and I would love to send you the preview of the first couple of lessons. Again, I would love to have you then promote it for me on Tuesday. That would be a huge help. Hey, well, thanks so much for watching. I will catch you in the next one. Happy coding.